how are you guys doing today? Great, how Wonderful. are you? Very well, thank you. First, let's begin. Can you please tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Stephanie Perrier Helling, I'm president of the National Apartment Association Education Institute and senior director of operations um, for the Real Estate Strategic Services Division of Graystar, which is the largest um, property management company in the United States and the world. And I'm Jeremy Lawson. I'm with Fogelman Management Group. I'm the reputation manager based in Memphis, Tennessee, and I've been with them 11 years. Now, what is the National Apartment Association Education Institute? So the National Apartment Association Education Institute is focused on providing um, educational opportunities and career outreach and promotion opportunities um, to the industry and we are looking to cultivate new talent um, to bring into the industry. So we're excited to talk to you about that today. Now how did you gather the information that will be provide, you'll be providing me with today? So statistics were gathered from places like the U.S. Department of Labor in addition to a website uh, that's called weareapartments.org uh, where your listeners can find even more statistics. Now, when did the most recent report come out? These statistics are from uh, 2017. Perfect. Okay, well, how many apartments are in the U.S.? Well, well um, how, many people, <laughs> how many people live in it? Let me rephrase that. I'm sorry. Sure. There, how many people live in apartments in the United States? Right now, there are 38 million people living in uh, apartment communities around the country. Uh, which contributes $1.3 trillion annually to the economy. Um, they support 12 million jobs as well, so we're excited to talk a little bit more about the jobs in the industry. I'll ask about that in a second. Uh, how is that number going to change in the future? Well, we hope it, it continues to go up. There's actually a 4.6 million um, unit deficiency, so we need more. By 2030, we need 4.6 million more apartments. Um, to sustain the, the need that we currently have. Now, why do people choose living in apartments rather than standard single-family homes? So there's really two driving forces to the growing number of renters. Um, number one, we all remember the housing crisis that really challenged the way that we think of the American dream, so much so that 11 million more people rent apartment homes today than just a decade ago. And secondly, uh, preferences are changing. So people's desires for the way they want to live um, is really changing. And we're seeing all people, millennials, um, Gen Xers, business professionals, baby boomers, and empty nesters choose apartment home living um, as a matter of preference. And they're doing that for a number of reasons. Number one, people want more work-life balance and they want to live, work, and play in the same area. They don't want to have to deal with a long commute to and from work. But in addition to being closer to work, they want to be closer to entertainment, leisure activities, restaurants, and retail. Um, and lastly, you know, people are so busy. People are busier today than ever. And they really want more of a worry-free lifestyle. You know, personal time is precious and people don't want to spend their entire weekend mowing the lawn or checking items off of the honeydew list. And by choosing apartment home living, it's more of a worry-free lifestyle. They have maintenance-free living, which is huge. Um, in addition to that, people are looking for concierge-level services and you know amenities that rival some of the best five-star resorts out there, including 24-hour fitness centers um, that you know compete with some of the best gyms. So we're happy to be able to meet those needs and provide that lifestyle for our residents. As I live in New York City, I understand, but there I understand apartment living. But it also seems like one reason it happens is because there are so few affordable home offer opportunities. You know, it's interesting. I think that's certainly a factor. Um, but in some cases, people are spending almost double 
on rent for an apartment home than they w were spending on their mortgage. And we're seeing people actually choose to sell their homes and leave suburbia and move closer to urban areas. And they're doing that for a couple of reasons. The amenities, um, you know, walkability and live, work, play that I mentioned. Um, but also, you know, suburbia doesn't always have that same appeal that it once did. And people just want to be closer. There's been a huge push in markets across the country for revitalization of urban centers. And people want to take advantage of that. It's very fun and vibrant. And, you know, I myself lived downtown when I was in college. College and I'm in suburbia, but I will eventually migrate back to an urban center because I'm a little jealous of my friends who are already doing that, to be honest. Well, some people will say that paying rent rather than getting equity in a home is like throwing money away. You know, that's one way to look at it. Um, however, I'll tell you that the people who've chosen to not pay a mortgage and are paying rent, you know, they're not throwing uh, money back into what some refer to as a money pit um, in their home and, you know, spending all of that money on upkeep. And now they're spending maybe the same or a little bit more on rent, but they're able to put money that they would otherwise put into home improvements into travel mm -hmm. and um, leisure activities, which is a huge selling point for them. How does apartment living affect the economy? Well, um, the economy is uh, impacted greatly because of our apartment renters. Directly and indirectly, they contribute $1.3 trillion to the United States economy through their um, you know, spending that they, they do. So, But it also supports jobs. That's a really big factor as well. And we have 12 million jobs that we support through the apartment industry. And we add 11,000 jobs every year to that. Um, so, Well, what are some of the career opportunities that come with this apartment boom? Sure. So as president of the National Apartment Association Education Institute, we're focused primarily on career outreach and promotion as well as providing educational opportunities to those who are new to the industry as well as providing continuing education to help people advance in their career. Um, you know, our business is really based on customer service. And so if someone's a people person, they're great with people, um, they're flexible, and they like to be part of a team, they would make a great fit in our industry. And we really have something for everyone um, that fit all levels of experience. Um, in fact, um, it's really a great fit for people who may have prior experience in retail and restaurants, uh, military veterans and their spouses. Um, it's a great opportunity for college students as well as recent college graduates. And um, while we don't require a degree to step into the industry, we do partner with over 41 colleges and universities and technical schools across the country that offer some sort of program in residential property management or maintenance. And you know, I happened into this as a college student with no prior experience, and um, it's been a great 25-year opportunity, so people are really happy. As a matter of fact, Forbes ranks property management professionals the second out of the 20 most satisfying jobs in America. Wow, that's great. How do people learn more about how to get these opportunities through you? You can go to rpmcareers.org. And you can actually connect with career ambassadors, too. I am one of them. So if you have any additional questions, you can go on to rpmcareers.org and connect with me. There's also a career launcher program, too. So if you're not sure where you want to go or where you want to take the next step, you can a answer a couple questions, and it'll pair you up with uh, a lot of the job openings that we have out there. Thank you. Well, one problem that people often have when renting an apartment is that after a lease is up, the rent can go up very quickly and become un you know, unaffordable. What advice would you have for people who want to lock in a good rate? Um, I would say, you know, lock in as long of a term as you can when you're first renting um, because that'll give you the opportunity to stay in your lease longer and keep that rent constant. Um, and, you know, choose something that's within your means because, you know, it's all based on supply and demand. Um, but there are definitely options out there that will provide um, a longer term uh, lease for people who are interested in that. Wonderful. Well, is there any more? Uh, is there anything else you guys would like to add? Um, I just want to reiterate, um, please visit rpmcareers.org, um, not only for available job opportunities, but as part of our Career Launcher program, you can receive free on-the-job training and find a career that you can be happy with. Sounds great. Well, thank you guys very much. Hope you have a good day. Thanks thank for you. having us.